Today is Wednesday, January 26, 2022, and I am calling this meeting of the Macomb Township Board of Trustees to order. We will now say the pledge. Clerk Posey, we please call the roll. Yes, Mr. Chairman. Trustee Cusimano? Here. Trustee Lucido? Here. Trustee Oliver? Here. Trustee Nevers? Present. Treasurer Jolette? Here. Clerk Posey here. Supervisor Viviano? Here. All members are present. Thank you. Moving on to approval of the agenda. Are there any additions, deletions, or corrections? Move to approve. Second. Any discussion? Hearing none, we have a motion by Clerk Posey, supported by Trustee Cusmano, to approve the agenda. Members, please vote. <clears throat> motion passes unanimously. Moving on to approval of the bills. Do I have a motion? So move. Support. Any discussion? We have a motion by Treasurer Gillette, supported by Trustee Oliver, to approve the bill run. Members, please vote. Motion passes <coughs> unanimously. Uh, approval of the previous meeting minutes from January 12th, 2022. Is there a motion? Move to approve. Support. Any discussion? Motion, motion by Clerk Posey, supported by Trustee Lucido, to approve the previous meeting's minutes. Members, please vote. <clears throat> motion passes unanimously. <laughs> All right, moving on to public comment. Anyone who who is present, who wishes to comment, can make their way to the microphone on the right-hand side of the room. Anybody who is participating remotely can digitally raise your hand and you will be called upon. I see nobody present moving. Eddie, any? No? No, sir. All right, no comments. We're going to move on. Item 5A. We have a request to approve the easement encroachment agreement. Mr. At Chair, I move to approve the consent agenda. In oh, I'm entirety. sorry. That was the consent. Second. Support. Thanks. Support. Thanks for stopping me. <laughs> Any discussion on the consent? Mr. Chairman, I have a question regarding the agenda, consent agenda item 7A through E. The question is, does, is there any manpower issues presented by the medical leaves of absences? There is a total of five. Mr. Tabaka? No, there is not. I believe most of those employees are already back. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Any other discussion? All right. Hearing none, we have a motion by Treasurer Gillette, supported by Trustee Cusmano, to approve the consent agenda. Members, please vote. Motion passes unanimously. All right, moving on to item eight. We have a request to adopt the annual Michigan Department of Transportation performance resolution for government agencies for renewal of the annual construction permit for operations within a state right of way. Is there a motion? So move. Second. Mr. Wanglin. Thank you, Supervisor Vivian on board members. Water and sewers in front of you tonight requesting permission to approve the annual MDOT permit. As we're aware of, uh, there are two uh, roads in the township that are governed by MDOT, that being Hall Road and a little sliver of uh, grass there in the southeast corner. This is your basic boilerplate uh, resolution permit, uh, if you will. Um, every year we approve this. There is, no, there is no charge for this, and they request to get approved uh, by means of a resolution. Thank you, Mr. Wing. No approval. Thank you. Any discussion? Okay, hearing none, we have a motion by Treasurer Gillette, supported by Clerk Posey, to adopt the 
Annual Michigan Department of Transportation Performance Resolution. Clerk Posey, will you please call the roll? Yes, Mr. Chairman. Treasurer Drolette? Yes. Clerk Posey, yes. Trustee Cusimano? Yes. Trustee Lucido? Yes. Trustee Oliver? Yes. <coughs> Trustee Nevers? Yes. And Supervisor Viviano? Yes. The resolution is adopted. We on to item nine is a request to approve the contract modification number one for the sanitary sewer rehabilitation by FCIPP lining, project number 0249-0216 in the amount of $404,799. Is there a motion? So moved, Mr. Chair. Support. Mr. Wangland. Thank you again, Supervisor Viviano and board members. Um, as already stated, this will be a request to increase this contract $404,799. This will be payable, or this contract is within Citra form. They are currently in our township doing uh, CIP work slash lining work uh, on a contract that was approved in September of last year. Um, the reason for, uh, I'll, I'll give a few highlights here, and I think the supervisor wrote a very good summarization this afternoon um, to a few board members in the form of an email. Uh, the reason for this uh, request is uh, um, several items here. Uh, th this work was always in the CIP program. It was just scheduled for a little bit further down the road. Um, we've, al we've also learned, I think Jim has also informed us that um, the road project, the McDoor project, the widening project, I should say, has been accelerated a little bit. So thus the need for us to get in and do our work, you know, uh, in front of their road project. Um, the other thing I might add is um, we've had three years of work with this contractor. Uh, they've done great work with us. Um, they've uh, always been the low bid and their bid in the fall was roughly 20% lower than anybody else. So we know, we know we, we feel as though we've got a good quote and um, we're recommending approval of this. Thank, I, thank you, Ms. Mangan. Yeah, I think he summarized it accurately. We had a discussion this afternoon. Um, the, the road project is referring to is the 23 mile widening. It's down to its last two phases. Uh, the original intention of the Macomb County Department of Roads was to do that in consecutive years, but we learned in recent months that they're doing, they're gonna put out both phases in one bid, and there's a possibility that both of those sections will get done in the same construction year. Is that accurate, Jim? Yes, that's what we so understand. Really, that's what accelerated our need to wanna to do uh, this project instead of waiting for the pump station uh, replacement that it was slated to be done with, which would have been done in a couple of years from now. So, Mr. Chair, would it be accurate to state that <coughs> taking a project that we intended to do next year or a little later and moving it forward in order to take advantage of the, uh, the economy of the scale of, of the current project being done nearby? Uh, partially and also because uh, we don't want to have to redo any work if they get the roads done, tear everything up. We would just go behind them and tear up what they had just replaced. Gotcha. Just put back. Okay, thank you. Get some pipe in. Yep. Mr. Chairman, I did send over 10 questions, and I'm satisfied that the purchasing policy and the contract is being complied with. And if anyone's interested in to confirm that due diligence, they can do a FOIA for these emails and the information that was exchanged. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Trustee Kuzma. Any other discussion? Okay, hearing none, we have a motion by Treasurer Gillette supported by Trustee Oliver to approve the contract modification in the amount of $404,799. Members, please vote. Motion passes unanimously. Moving on to item 10 is a request to approve the bid uh, for utility bill printing and mailing, which is RFP 21-032. Is there a motion? So moved. Second. Thank you. 
Uh, Mr. Wangland. Thank you, Supervisor Viviano and board members. Again, Water and Sewers in front of you tonight requesting we award the contract to one source, one source in the amount of $16,200 for the first year with three optional, for three, uh, with an optional three year extension period as, as quoted in, uh, in your packet. A little bit of background here. Um, in April of uh, 21, the board approved uh, an, a, a lockbox agreement with Comerica, Comerica Bank. Uh, and after much trial and error, I think between water and sewer and treasury, uh, we learned that uh, the current billing, billing pressure ceiling uh, means and methods at water and sewer is not compatible with, not compatible with the lockbox program, thus the need to put this project out for, for, for bid, for printing. Um, as you can see in your packet, um, there were 34 plan takers, five bids received, a uh, committee comprised of water and sewer employees as well as treasury employees, uh, did interviews, did the grading, um, and are making a recommendation that we uh, move forward with one source. And I'm sure there's some questions with this particular item, and I'll be happy to address them as best I can. Thank you, Mr. Wanglin. Okay, do we have any Supervisor? discussion? Go ahead, if I may. This is by means of, uh, I guess, discussion. Um, if this motion uh, is not to succeed, I'll be making the motion to award the contract to Peregrine Services. Uh, the committee that, uh, that met to decide on which of the various firms to, uh, to choose did an outstanding job and uh, narrowed it down to basically the two firms, uh, One Source in Illinois and Peregrine Services in Louisiana. Um, the, uh, my understanding is that um, the committee, uh, the majority in the committee believed that One Source being in Illinois was closer and therefore was probably um, a better choice as far as mailing from Illinois to Michigan as opposed to Louisiana and Michigan. Uh, whereas Peregrine Services is about 40% cheaper in cost than the Illinois company. And so it's a question of what do we consider to be the higher value? Uh, and uh, both companies, uh, our uh, purchasing specialist, uh, did background checks, checked the uh, re checked references on both companies. Both companies appear to be highly qualified companies that have a great number of municipal uh, customers. Uh, Peregrine has uh, over 100 uh, municipal customers, I believe over 140. Uh, One Source also has a lot of municipal customers. Both have customers in Michigan. Uh, I believe that um, we should, pers I personally believe we should accept the lower bid. It's a 40% reduction in, in what, the one, uh, what the Illinois company is. I recognize that there's always a little challenge if you're going to be mailing from a little further. I believe we can adjust the due dates for when the uh, bills become late by a few days to account for any potential concerns that might ar arrive from mailing. But these companies mail from all across all across the United States to clients in, in, in many, many, many states. Uh, and it's not been an issue. Both the people in Bay City, that was one of the references, and in Ohio, the ones we talked to, did not have a problem with Peregrine Services. <clears throat> so I'm, I'm going to vote no on this motion, and then if that if the motion passes, and it passes, and I believe we'll still have a good company in one source. Uh, but if the um, if the motion fails, and I'll be making a motion for Peregrine Services, I think we should go with a low bidder in this case. But I don't believe that. that I, I want to thank the committee for doing their work in trying to make a uh, a best decision uh, using a lot of complicated factors. I do also will note that the committee did end up uh, in their scoring system scoring Peregrine Services as the highest scorer on the uh, committee, if I'm, uh, if I'm correct on that, Jerry. You are correct. I, I guess I might chime in. Um, the one thing that influenced us heavily was um, the bills are gonna be printed roughly a thousand, a little over a thousand miles away from here and then need to make their way back to Macomb Township. You know, with, with uh, the Postal Service seemingly getting to be less and less reliable, that scared the committee quite a bit. Um, I you know, think, uh, obviously, it seems like the weather get, is getting more volatile. 
especially up and down the East Coast and in that in the in that area that that caught caught our attention. Um, those were some of the things that weighed into the committee's decision to go with the company out of Illinois. We do recognize that they are substantially higher, but um, those were the things that we took into account. Thank you, Mr. Wangland. Um, I, I, I agree with both the committee and with Treasurer Trillette. Um It is about assigning value to the risk of having our invoices printed much further away and the time it might take them through the U.S. mail. Uh, if this board were to choose the low bidder, then we bear the responsibility of assuming that risk. Um, is it worth, I think it's about 25000 a year, right? Difference? No, no it's about it, 6400 I believe. About 6400 a year, I'm sorry. It's, I believe. So, I will note that we, if we do additions in inserts in these mailings, <laughs> the cost difference goes up Go. much higher. Oh, I get it. And, and, I, and I'm... I kind of told you this. I'm of two minds about it. I, I want to make sure that we're not leaving our residents, uh, you know, short short the amount of time necessary to come in to pay the bills. If we were to choose the low cost bidder instead of going with their recommendation, we would certainly have to make some adjustments to our timing and when uh, we expect the bills to be paid and when they're due. Mm -hmm. I agree. Um, but I'm I'm inclined to go with. You know the committee's recommendation they put a lot of thought into it they certainly have uh, had done all the research they've asked all of us internally about what those concerns might be and how we might best address them they still concluded to go with the slightly higher cost bidder i will say that all the other bids all the other were all reasonably close to the second highest bidder correct that's correct so we did have one substantially lower and then there was a a whole slew of them together so it seems like there is an opportunity to save money but the second highest bidder appears to be somewhere in the neighborhood of industry standards you know that if I might add one more thing you know when we open up quotes and you see something you see a bunch of quotes all clumped together then you see one quote that's incredibly low you know I'm not saying it's a red flag, but it sure it sure makes you sit up and take notice, you know. Well, Mr. Rangel, pick, I would say it was could, a red flag. It was a red flag to me when I saw how much could, lower could it was. Could we pick out any any differences? We could not, but you know, so incredibly low just caught our attention as well. It, it caught mine. I wasn't part of the committee that reviewed them, but I was here when they opened the bids, and when I saw the difference in how low it was. It was a red flag to me. Uh, th that's why I had asked our purchasing specialist to do some extra diligence and check on this company but it was this is not a fly-by-night company that opened up six months ago they have hundreds of, of clients and they mail across the united states including the midwest and i agree with you that the mail is been very challenging lately but you know that's been happening even here locally we mail it locally and we have people coming to the treasurer's office saying i just got my bill two days ago and it's already due and it, we know we mailed it three weeks ago so that's happening here, so I, I do concur with the supervisor and work with the uh, we should work with the water department to make adjustments if possible to give to extend the uh, the due date a little bit on some of these bills just in case. But I could not find a flaw in this company's performance and their references and their track record, and they're uh, they're certified by the Better Business Bureau. I couldn't find the flaw. I, I agree with you. It was like a little startling. Why are they 40% less? They claim it's because they have the most advanced equipment in the industry. I'm not an expert on the you know, <laughs> equipment in the industry, but um, Maybe. they looked solid. So this is a rare occurrence when you know, a lot of things we do on this board are very routine. Um, we have a lot of unanimous votes because they are routine in nature, but you know, this is one where any of us could come down on either side and it would be a it would be, I think, a reasonable vote either side. So I guess we're going to have to decide whether we want to go with the recommendation or go with the low bidder. So our, our first vote is going to be? First vote's going to go with the recommendation. recommendation. If we say no, then one of us can make a motion to accept the low bid. Mr. Chairman, I have a question. Did any other Michigan municipalities share <coughs> experiences of delays in regards to the mailing of their mail with this lowest bidder 
No, and in fact, and Janet, correct me if I'm wrong, that Bay City and some other <coughs> regional, Warren, Ohio, I think was one, a reference that we checked and all reported uh, good service. <coughs> Okay, so then other than our anecdotal experience about the unreliability of the mail, there's no evidence right now as we sit today that this company can't put, can't perform to the same level as the higher bidder. That is correct. All right, thank you, Mr. Chair. Mr. Chairman, if I may. Uh, Mr. Winglin, out of curiosity, I know a lot of um, companies have moved towards paperless billing for this exact reason um, without the reliability of the postal. Are we anywhere near that? Is that something we're looking into in the future? I think Mr. Drolet can speak to that. Well, we already do uh, have options to pay paperless. People can pay online. They can pay by phone. Uh, they can have. Uh, they can get it set up on auto pay. So there's already those options. But we do bill. We do send a physical bill to every customer. Uh, whether or not uh, we could move away from that, it's something we could explore. But. Jerry, I don't know, are we, are we required still uh, to physically send the bill to every customer, or is that something we still choose to do? I don't think do? there's any requirement or rule or regulation law, no. Uh, okay. But uh, there's plenty of ways to pay paperless, but we still do mail. Uh, it might be something we can look into as far as people asking to be removed from the physical billing list. It would save us money. Yeah, I mean, I know a lot of just my regular bills come through my email with notification, and mm -hmm. you pay that way. So... Although there's options out there to pay, I think sometimes it's uh, even helpful to receive the notification that it's due, and then at least they've, if this, um, you know, the slowing delay with the postal office continues, there is a backup with knowing that electronically it was sent. Just an option. I agree. I think that's something that I will talk with the water department. We could look into ways we could move that direction. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you. Couple yes, things, if I could. Um, I hate to undermine work that people did for an evaluation committee, but when I see a company has the highest score and the lowest price, I have a, a hard time, you know, spending that much more money over a four-year period. I would suggest that we vote no on this and try the other company for one year. I wouldn't sign a four-year deal. See how it goes after one year and reevaluate at that point. I just can't see spending that much more money when their score was actually higher than all the others. So I'll be voting no on this initial motion. Sure. I will note that we do have an opt-out of anybody we contract with that built into the, any of the contracts if we're dissatisfied with service. Thank you. Okay. Anyone else wish to weigh in? <coughs> all right. But, can I just got one question. But but it seems like the committee really felt strong about this next bidder. I would and, say, and again, all, all the evidence points to this. You, you, you're bid, correct, Mr. Oliver. The committee bidder. felt the majority of the committee felt strong about the, the recommendation. Yes, for for the couple reasons, um, the mileage. You know, the Illinois company is about 340 miles away, and obviously. The low bidders, 1,033 miles away. The other thing we did like, and I didn't, I hadn't mentioned it yet, uh, the Illinois company does quality. They, well, they they both do quality checks. Uh, the Illinois company <coughs> does it in person with a human being. Uh, the, the Illinois company does it with a robot. That that caught our caught our ear. So how did the other company end up scoring higher from the, the committee? I don't think they were that far apart. They were, there was a little discrepancy. Um, I think you had 86% to versus 80. 86 points versus 80 points or whatever it might 80, be. 86 versus 80. Right, okay. So low bidder was only a little bit higher rated by the committee. So, Mr. Wrangland, it's my understanding it was a split vote, though, on the committee, correct? Four members voted for this, and one voted for the low bid. Okay. It's a very close call. I don't... Even sitting here, I'm not even sure what I'm going to vote. I understand it. I, I just wanted everybody to know how we felt and the reasons we felt 
or made the recommendation we were making. So in my feeling that maybe your biggest concern was the the destiny of how far away was exactly yep okay. because each what if, might if have, what is, might happen if the if the mail's delayed that's that's what was that's what this is decision based on is is the unreliability of the US mail and, and Mr. Guzmano's right it's purely anecdotal what we've all experienced in the mail the last year or two years which seems to be getting a tad worse. Yep. Did, note that a local company did bid. It was right in the same grouping with the others and was not given any preference over the fact that mailing from Metro Detroit. We had a company here in Michigan. Correct. In Troy. And they they bid or they bid. <coughs> how, they bid. How far were they off? A uh, dollar bid. amount. They're all clustered within that middle group. Okay. And there are other reasons I think the committee decided not to not to go that direction correct they they were one of the three we took to the second round and had an oral interview with but i might add they did take a distant third okay but if but again if distance was our main thing but i i think the post office I, i'm not an expert on the post office. i shouldn't venture my guesses but the carriers at the last mile are are seem to be an element of, of the delays it's true clinton township missing routes i got one question to whoever um, is this something that we could uh, pump the brakes on take a second look at it to, to what to what end what well, would we be looking at maybe maybe trying to nail down the postal maybe they send maybe the stuff comes here UPS and then it gets distributed I, I don't know it's not the challenge that we have is we've timed um, this process to correspond with when our water and sewer department run out of the stock of their existing materials. So we try to make sure we utilize the existing paper, the existing stock for the bills, and we want to start this new process in April. So we don't have that. We, we really want to. So we got a time. We got it. We, we got a window time. here we're working with. Exactly. Correct. Okay. All right. There's a setup window, and then there's also a window when water and sewer is going to run out of stock, and we kind of need to make a decision sure. one way or another. Understood. Another question: Did did you ever get to the person that that maybe is in charge of the mailing side of this business and find mm -hmm. out, you know, what what their pass has been if they. Well, had pretty good success with mailing. Me, Trustee Oliver, I can tell you that all of the references that Ms. Solomon checked on, they were all good. Okay. I, I don't think we're deciding. Really, I think either company has excellent references, and either company has uh, got a lot of clients and a good track record. It's not about the company. It's about the post office. It's about our comfort level. It's about, our, yeah. it's about the post office, but then, of course, the price. And the price. Yeah. All right, I think uh, we should call for a vote. So we have a motion by, who was it? By Trustee Oliver, supported by Clerk Posey, to approve the bill award for the utility bill printing to, what was the name of the company, Jerry? One Source. One Source. One Source. <coughs> Members, please vote. Motion fails with Trustees Cusmano, Lucido, and Treasurer Gillette, and Clerk Posey voting no. Mr. Chair? Yes. I can make a motion that we uh, extend uh, a contract uh, or sign a contract with Peridrine Services, uh, Louisiana, at, the, uh, at their bid price, and that okay. you are authorized to execute that contract. Trustee Cusmano will support that motion. Okay, I think we just, just had the discussion. Is there no. any further? Dis okay. That's our lowest bidder. That's, That's the low bidder. bidder. Okay, just getting that clear. Any further discussion on that motion? I'd just like to say again, if I could, I, I'd like to try this one out for a while. If we see that there's an issue at the next mailing, like they're getting there too late, then I would be happy to revisit this again and go with the next bidder. Even, I mean, are we bound to have to 
put out again for an RFP, or can we go back to another company now that we've already? I think done it depends it? on when we get out of the contract. Okay. Is whether the old the current bids would be <clears throat> stale or not. Would that is that accurate, Janet? Yeah. Thank you. I, I'm not I'm not mad at losing that vote. So, I think I think both decisions are sound. Uh, I would be I would have been okay with losing the vote because I do respect the work of the committee. And I think we're moving in the right direction in general. None of us know exactly, you know, <laughs> so we're trying to do the best we can. All right, we have a motion by Treasurer Gillette, supported by Trustee Cusmano, to accept the bid for utility bill printing and mailing for to per, Peregrine Services. Peregrine, like the Falcon. I probably know that helps me a lot. Thanks. <laughs> Very fast birds. Fast bird services. That motion passes seven to zero. Thank you, board. Okay, thank you, Mr. Wangland. All right, moving on to item 11. We have a request to participate in the 26 Mile Road and Hayes intersection improvements estimated at $101,875. Is there a motion? So move. Support. I need this, oh, uh, Mr. Van Tiflin. Yes, Mr. Chairman, board members. The Department of Roads is currently considering some improvements to the intersection of 26 Mile and Hayes Road. Um, this would include some lane improvements as well as uh, a light, traffic light at the intersection. <coughs> um, they have uh, estimated the, the cost, total cost of the project to be just a little bit over $800,000. Uh, as is the, the county's policy, they would pick up 50% of that and the local municipalities would pick up the other 50%. In this case, that intersection borders four municipalities, Macomb, Ray, Washington, and Shelby. So they are at this point asking the four municipalities if they are interested in participating in the project and looking for board support. Normally we would have a, a, a cost sharing agreement uh, before the board, we're not there yet. They need, need to make sure that everybody's on board before they uh, proceed uh, down that road. So as mentioned, the township's portion is roughly $101,875, uh, and that is a very preliminary estimate. We, the cost sharing agreement may be uh, somewhat different uh, as they go through the process of design and, and getting their, their full estimates done. So with that, I'd be happy to answer any questions. Thank you, Mr. Van Teflin. Uh, did we ever find out what their timing is on this? I, no, I was not able to, to get that information. I'm assuming they're they're trying to get this done this year. This year, it, yeah, it's still were. early in the you know in the season. I think they could get the design done, uh, but I, I don't know for sure. Okay, thank you. Any other discussion? Okay, hearing none, we have a motion by Treasurer Dot, supported by Trustee Oliver, to participate in the 26 Mile Road and Hayes intersection improvements. Members, please vote. Motion passes unanimously. Item 12, the request to schedule a public hearing for the street lighting SAD resolution for Monarch Estates Site Condominiums, Phase 3, for February 23rd, 2022. Is there a motion? So move. Support. Mr. Van Tiflin? Yes, Mr. Chairman, board members, this is a new development, and as is required by Township Ordinance, they uh, have to install street lights. Uh, we are trying to have a public hearing to establish the special assessment district. Uh, the de developer has deposited all the funds for the construction side. Um, we just need to pass the resolution to actually establish the, the SAD. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any discussion? Hearing none, motion by Treasurer Gillette, supported by Trustee Lacido, to schedule the public hearing for street lighting SAD uh, for Monica State Site Condos for February 23rd, 2022. Members, please vote. Motion passes unanimously. All right, moving on to item 13. We have an authorization, uh, seeking an authorization to extend an offer of employment in the Parks and Rec Department. Is there a motion? So moved. Support. Mr. Tabaka. Thank you, Mr. Supervisor and board members. The Macomb Township Board of Trustees authorized HR to initiate the recruitment process for the position of Rec Program Leader. The HR department received 13 applications, 
nine of these applications were in invited to interview with the selection committee. They were interviewed on January 13th and January 14th. The selection committee consisted of Sal DeCarl, our Parks and Rec Director, Linda Walters, former Clinton Township Parks and Rec Director, Carla Scruggs, current Parks and Rec Director of Celine, and myself, and we are recommending Lacey Ward for the position. It's approved, if approved, it's contingent upon successful completion of all post-off requirements, and we will be looking for an effective date of hire around February 14th of 2022. Thank you for your consideration. Thank you. Any questions or discussion? One Is, question. Yep. Was this an existing um, job position or was this a yes. created position? Okay. Yeah, retiring. No, this is, yeah. Oh, this one that retired. Open for She's retirement. retiring in March. Yeah. Okay. Got you. Thank you. This is Michelle Duda's position. Got it. That's what I thought. Okay. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, <clears throat> there wasn't anything in the packet regarding Lacey Ward. Uh, is she currently an employee of the township? No, she is not. Does she have significant experience in the field? Yes, plenty of experience. She's been with her past company for, I think, 14 or 15 years. And where is that? It's called DADA. Detroit okay. Auto Dealers Association. All right, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'm satisfied. Thank you, Mr. Kuzmano. There's no more discussion. We have a motion by Clerk Posey, supported by Trustee Oliver, to extend the offer of employment to Lacey Ward. Motion, members, please vote. Motion passes 7 0. Uh, next item is a request to initiate the recruitment process for a lead maintenance worker in the Park and Rec's department. So move. Support. Mr. Tobacco. Yes, Mr. Supervisor and Board Members, Sale Carl, Parks and Rec Director, has requested the HR Department to initiate the recruitment process for the position of a lead maintenance worker. Due to the recent changes within the Parks and Rec Department, taking on three additional employees from F&G and several part-time employees, Mr. DeCaro believes that elevating one employee to the lead maintenance worker position will help with the daily communication and coordinating tasks for, task for both full-time and part-time employees. This position being requested is covered under the CBA agreement with MAPE and would be posted in accordance with the provisions of the CBA. Thank you again for your consideration. Thank you, Mr. Tobacco. Mr. Chair, I'll follow up with one of uh, Trustee Lucido's questions. That is, we're essentially taking one of the existing employees and putting them in charge of this particular aspect. So we're giving them a promotion. We're not creating a new we're not opening, we're not hiring a brand new person, right? Correct. Correct. It will be an internal move and we will not backfill that position. Okay. Thank you. We're, yeah, we post internally. <laughs> Any other questions for Mr. DeBaca? Okay. Hearing none, we have a motion by Treasurer Dillette, supported by Trustee Nevers, to initiate the recruitment process for a lead maintenance worker. Motion, members, please vote. Motion passes unanimously. Item 15 is a request to initiate the recruitment process for the position of election supervisor. Is there a motion? So moved. Support. Mr. Tabaka. Yes, Mr. Supervisor and board members. Christy Posey, township clerk, has requested the HR department to initiate the recruitment process for the position of the election supervisor, as we are anticipating an opening in this position. This position, position is covered under the CBA with Ask Me, Local 1917, and would be posted in accordance with the provisions of the CBA. Thank you for consideration, and I would be happy to answer any questions. Thank you, Mr. DeBacca. Any discussion or questions? <coughs> okay, hearing none, we have a motion by Trustee Oliver, supported by Treasurer Gillette, to initiate the recruitment process for the position of election supervisor. Members, please vote. Motion passes unanimously. Mr. Chair, I move to support items 16 and 17 in their entirety. Thank you, Treasurer Gillette. Is there support? Second. Mr. DeBaca, items 16 and 17. 
Thank you, Mr. Supervisor and board members. At the board meeting on January 12, 2022, the, town, or the Township Board of Trustees authorized HR to recruit for the position of CFO and Land Development Director. This position was posted in compliance with the Ask Me Local 1917 CBA. The internal candidates was interviewed by myself and the Township Supervisor. These candidates were found to be very well qualified for their positions and at this time we'd like to move forward with these promotions. Thank you again for your consideration and I'd be happy to answer any questions. Thank you, Mr. DeBaca. Any questions or discussion? Mr. Chairman, I have a question regarding why, why is it the practice as exemplified in this, these two items not to name the employees? Um, is there a reason why there's I can give you their employee number if you would like. I know that's on there. You got it. I understand the employee number, but for purposes of transparency, I think they should be proud of their service to the township and and well deserved um, advancements into these new positions. I'm curious why, if someone's searching the packet, can't discern the name of the employees that are being elevated to these positions. I, actually, I don't know why, other than I this past practice to not name employees specifically for various reasons, but is there any other reason it might be? No, I mean, generally not for a promotion, the names would be included, but I would guess it's just been habit or practice. Do, do, our, do our employees object? I would to be more than happy to introduce them. <laughs> so, yes, they're, they're present here today. So, Mr. Tobacco, why don't you? EE52, please stand up. <laughs> Congratulations to Stacy Smith for the CFO position and Mr. Van Tiflin for the land development. I don't know why you're clapping. We haven't voted yet. <laughs> Mr. Chairman, I would make a friendly <coughs> amendment to the motion that the names of the candidates be stated in the minutes. Support. Second. Oh. Thank you. Okay. If there's no more, is there any more discussion? No. I'm good. Okay. So we have a motion on the floor uh, to promote Stacy Smith to Township CFO and Jim Van Tiflin to uh, Land Development Director. Motion by Treasurer Gillette, supported by Clerk Posey. Members, please vote. You voted twice. Just once. Yeah. Motion passes unanimously. Thank you. I assume they're just going to skip ahead then. All right, that's moving on to item 18. Uh, we have a request to approve the final plan for the park at Town Center, which is on permanent parcel ID 0809 which is located north of 24 Mile Road, east of Romeo Plank, in Section 9 in Macomb Center Estates. Uh, is there a motion? So move. Support. Mr. Box. Thank you, Mr. Chairman and Board. Uh, this uh, development is located, as you said, north of 24 Mile um, near Cracklewood Golf Course. There's a, a subdivision in there, and there are some single-family homes as well as some multiple uh, family developments in there. Uh, this is one of the new multiple fam family developments that they're going to be constructing. Um, the preliminary plan for this actually included, there are six total buildings. And the preliminary plan had 46 total units, and it's being reduced to 42. I know in the packet it says a reduction from eight buildings to 10 buildings. It's actually a reduction from 10 units down to eight units within two of those buildings. Uh, so it's going from, it's a reduction in four total units within the development of what was approved in the preliminary plan. Okay, thank you, Mr. Box. And, and for the record too, the, the footprint of the buildings is not changing. It's, they're just creating larger units within the buildings. Okay. Understood. Any questions for Mr. Box or any qu discussion? Okay, we have a motion by Treasurer Gillette, supported by <coughs> Trustee Oliver, to approve the final plan for the park at Town Center on permanent parcel ID 0809301039. Members, please vote. Motion passes unanimously. 
Moving on to item 19, we have a request to authorize the submission of an MDOT Transportation Alternative Program grant application. Is there a motion? So move. Second. Treasurer Gillette. Thank you, Mr. Chair. The uh, township's in the process of preparing a application for a grant through SEMCOG, uh, Southeast Michigan Council of Governments, for uh, we are actually, uh, the, the, the applying entity would be the county. We would be applying through the county. This would be a project uh, that will cost about $500,000 to essentially connect Corners Park through to the township uh, hall, um, essentially providing sidewalks, a street uh, safety uh, mechanism for those crossing the streets, essentially connect the parks with the township uh, campus here. Um, and uh, as part of the requirement for the grant is showing support from the township for the grant application because the county's applying on our behalf. Uh, ultimately, if we are successful, we won't know this for several months, the uh, grant would be $400,000 would be given to us from SEMCOG. The county would pay $50,000 and we would pay $50,000. So it'd be a half a million dollars. So it's a, it's a good return on our investment. So what we're demonstrating here is that we are supporting this particular grant application. Thank you, Treasurer Gillette. Just a quick question on the grant. I don't know if you know this, but if we get awarded the grant, is, is, would, is that a lump sum or is that throughout a course of years? It's essentially a lump sum. There may be like two things, but it's not over the course of years. Okay. Good. I think that's correct. Yes. Be a big giant lump. <laughs> Bum. <laughs> You're kind of an expert at. <laughs> okay. Well, it sounds good. <laughs> I don't know how if anyone get would it, not for this, right? No, it's, it would be a big win for the township if we could sure. begin to secure some grant money from some of these programs. Yep. So, any more discussion? Okay, we have a motion by Treasurer Gillette, supported by Clerk Posey, to authorize the submission of an MDOT TAP grant application. Members, please vote. Motion passes unanimously. Moving on to public comment. This is for non-agenda items, so anyone wishes to speak may approach the microphone in the right-hand side of the room. Uh, if you are participating remotely, please digitally raise your hand and you will be called upon. I don't see anybody in here moving. Is there anybody who wishes to participate remotely? Not no, sir, no. No, so, moving on to board comments. Supposed to start on the other side now these days, right? Mm -hmm. Trustee Lacido. I uh, just wanted to congratulate <clears throat> employees number 52 and 1479. <laughs> I uh, just want to say, in, in my time on the board, working with them has been terrific, very knowledgeable, great people, and uh, have the township's best interests at heart. So, congratulations to you guys, and thank you. Thank you. Trustee Nevers. Yes, I too would like to offer my congratulations to both of you. I've worked for a long time with the both of you, and this is well-deserved, and it's moving in the right direction. I'm sorry. Trustee, uh, Trustee Oliver. <laughs> I also can commend both of these, Jim and Stacy. Uh, I probably worked longer than anyone here with these two people, and uh, we couldn't we couldn't give our our finances and our engineering to any better people that would protect the residents and protect uh, all of us and uh, uh, congratulations uh, you guys really did a good job because uh, I I'm happy that's it thank you trustee Oliver trustee Guzmano I will quad quadruple the <laughs> congratulatory <laughs> comments I've also had good experiences. I've known Mr. Van Tiflin for almost 20 years when we were out looking at the seawall and my retention basin. And, and I'm, my experience is he's been professional, honest, and forthright with all of his communications, at least with me as a resident and as a trustee. 
Also, Stacy, congratulations. The same goes for my interactions with Stacy as well. Now on a more serious note, I've been receiving some complaints regarding the recreational center's um, requirement that there be a penalty uh, or for reinstatement fee of $100. There's going to be an Open Meetings Act uh, meeting of the Board of Trustees on February 4th, 2022, where there'll be presentations by various department heads and uh, I intend to look at the issue and see whether or not after COVID, if there's a possibility of waiving that fee for a period of time or of providing an amnesty period so that people can re-engage with the rec center. Um, but I'll save any further comment or discussion for that um, meeting. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Trustee Kuzmano. Um, Treasurer Drolat. This is more of a question than a comment, uh, and it's more to the HR department. Were there, regarding employees 52 and 1479, were there any lower bidders for these positions <laughs> that were available? <laughs> <laughs> no? Okay. Uh, <laughs> wanted, to, wanted to note that uh, I think that demonstrates that uh, you oftentimes get what you pay for them. We've got some amazingly great quality uh, employees and staff, and I wanted to uh, congratulate those that have been uh, extended these opportunities and the, and the work they do for the township. But also I wanted to appreciate the uh, work that's done uh, as, we trans as we move toward a different uh, mailing and billing system, work done by the Water and Sewer Department, who's been an outstanding partner uh, in that process as things change and uh, it's, it's not always uh, a clear path, but we are definitely doing what we can with the best interest of the residents in mind to provide great service in our, our Water and Sewer Department uh, do an amazing job. Uh, and I'd like, to, I'd like to also thank them for their work today. I know there was a water main break on Romeo Plank uh, causing some traffic disruptions and water disruptions, and I know that's a challenging thing to deal with in 16-degree weather. So your department and the folks that you, uh, that you have, uh, Jerry, are, are greatly appreciated. Thank you. Done? That's all I got. Clerk Posey. <laughs> Thank you. I just want to say that uh, in my first term, um, we had some unusual circumstances that uh, forced Mr. Van Tiflin and Stacy to take on additional responsibilities and duties and, and a whole lot of extra time and effort and work to keep the township afloat. And I saw it firsthand and I had the pleasure of working with them side by side to keep that going. So I uh, believe this was truly deserved by both of you and I'm thankful that it finally came to fruition. Congratulations. Um, also to the Macomb Township voters, um, due to federal, state, and county redistricting, we have to um, redraw our maps for, the, for Macomb Township voting. So we are in the process right now of doing that. Um, you can anticipate a change possibly to your precinct and or polling location. Uh, the clerk's office will notify you with your voter identification card of any changes that may um, happen to your voting. Uh, precinct or polling location and we will do several public service announcements to keep you informed of any changes so look forward to that in the mail and that's all i have thank you clerk posey supervisor comments well i guess i want to add to the cascade of compliments um stacy employee number 52. <laughs> hmm, not many two-digit employee numbers anymore <laughs> And Mr. Kuzmano, you, that means you knew Jim when he had hair. Oh, 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 oh. I, 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 for full disclosure, I think we were wearing hats. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, congratulations to you both. It's very well deserved. And uh, Josh, you're doing a fine job. I didn't want you to feel left out. <laughs> um, I also want to take a moment. Uh, <laughs> Three of our firefighters uh, recently, um, you know, sort of went above and beyond. We got a nice letter from a resident who was very grateful, um, and I, I don't want to go into the circumstances uh, for the sake of the resident, but three of our, just I want everyone to know that our firefighters do a great job. These three firefighters in particular uh, spent time and showed compassion 
and gave some of our residents some comfort and dignity at a time when they most needed it. So I want to thank Jeff Craig, Tom Putnam, and David McGee uh, for representing us so well and for their continued service to our community. And with that, is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. Is there any discussion on the motion? Hearing none, we have a motion by Clerk Posey, supported by Trustee Cusmano, to adjourn the meeting. Members, please vote. Motion passes unanimously. This meeting is adjourned. Okay.